The Great Reset comes every Sunday. It happens when you arise and bow down to your Maker, when you do things so hard so much of the week and then humble yourself on the seventh day, ease into the comfort of giving in a little, and reflect on how much better you can be. None of us are perfect. Reflecting on that detail is so humbling and leveling. Life can make a lot more sense after that few minutes or few hours of prayerful reflection. You put your other tasks on hold, prioritizing this reflective prayerful period, if you are one who honors the Sabbath. To let all other frivolity leave your mind, like a yoke lifted off the shoulders. And greater priorities rise up, like cream on the milk, the finest of your life rises up. In prayer. In supplication. In obedience. Bow down to rise up. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. The Great Reset is not decided half a world away. It was devised long ago. The Great Reset is not planned out by the wise minds of our day. It was planned out long before anyone knew of those wise minds of this day. Though every age has had their wise minds, their false prophets, their technocrats. The Great Reset comes every Sunday if you let it, and your Monday, your Tuesday, your Wednesday, your Thursday, your Friday, your Saturday are better off because of it, week after week, month after month, year after year, are better off because you choose not to be led astray, not to wander off in frivolity, you choose to let yourself be liberated and refocused. The Great Reset takes place every Sunday, in your own life, if you let it and no other thing, no matter how well marketed, can in any way be compared to the magnitude of the Great Reset, the real Great Reset, the Great Reset that takes place each Sunday in the lives of the faithful, the faithful who can barely remember what it's like to be fearful, their faith has been so strong, so joyous, so illuminating through the dark. Supplication. Renewal. Rebirth. You emerge from the door of the sanctuary almost feeling like a different person than when you came in. Just like you felt seven days earlier. And if you fall sick and miss a week, you realize how much that rebirth means to you. There's just something about walking into the sanctuary every single Sabbath and experiencing that rebirth that I've never been able to put to words, and he who has not made it a practice may not yet be able to understand it. Visit us online, does not achieve the same, at least not for me. Do you believe in it? Do you really believe in everything the pastor says? Do you really believe in everything written in the Bible? I don't care if you do. I'm not sure you should either. Don't let the minutiae distract you from the rudiment, from the foundational, from the essential, from the core. To deny the good, because it is not perfect, or more precisely, because it is not perfectly understood by you, does you a disservice. I don't know that I've ever encountered perfection. Perhaps you have. How much I would have missed out on in life if I would have limited myself by demanding that everything must be perfect. In fact, you can do a lot of amazing things, from learning numerous languages to meeting the most amazing people, if you aren't afraid to make a fool of yourself once in a while. Just dispensing with that fear can accomplish so much. This is the very opposite of pretending there is flawless, peerless, perfection and then demanding only that in order for you to act decisively. It really is the opposite of faith. This aversion to risk in our era, this obsession with safety, it is also an aversion to taking leaps of faith. It is the insistence that everything must be perfect before one will act. Promises and sureties must be put in place and if anything changes, the plan is called off. Faith is a mystery all its own that confers great blessings and can, indeed, move mountains. To decide you cannot move a mountain is the surest way to not move a mountain. To commit to moving a mountain is the surest way to making that happen. Being overly skeptical chokes that gift from your life and is an effective self-sabotage. Avoid effective self-sabotage. Instead, seek to prosper. Do the things that bring you prosperity. Engage in those practices. It is the magnum opus of your life that I want to emerge, not the minutia. Too much focus on the minutia, and you will be left with too much of some good things in life that become pretty awful for you in mass quantities. Being overly focused on the disabling minutia, the debilitating distraction will corrupt you, leaving you overly tired, overly skeptical, overly circumspect, overly petty, overly miserly, and overly unfulfilled. Each of these things are wonderful in their proper quantity in your life. Skepticism may be the most debilitating, for our era says there need never be limit to it. Limitless skepticism limits your life. This practice, this great reset that comes each Sunday, call it ritual. Call it tradition. Call it what you must. 
There is wisdom in it. It is the great reset. It works and many of the greatest parts of life are built out of it. This practice will change your life. The world as we today know it has been shaped by this practice, economic freedom, political and civil freedom, human dignity, ethics and morality, conscience and courage, our very sense of individuality and uniqueness. We aren't that unique, says the modern skeptic, the behavioral psychologist, and the adherence to the orthodoxy of the technocrat. My friend, we are as unique as they come. We are as unique as we allow ourselves to be. We are as unique as we choose. And yes, we all like the comfort of the herd from time to time, and the more we use the muscles that allow us to discern the right path in front of us and to choose the right path, the better we become at it. We all get to choose. You might not like all the people you find in church. None of us are perfect. Many of the people you find in church are pursuing greater excellence in their lives. They build a practice of it. They try to discern and to choose the more and more excellent paths, to decide better and to take action in the way that is more excellent. Many go to church to excel in all the right ways. Do I believe in that practice? Yes. I believe in the Great Reset, but it is not a thing of man, held in Switzerland among the most elevated in our era. No, it is held each Sunday in the lives of all who accept it and that is not only the Great Reset, but the Greatest Reset. As more awakened to their sense of courage and their demand to be more aligned with their truest beliefs, whatever they may be, it becomes clear what a blessing 2020 has been as it drove more men to rouse from their slumbers and question what it is that they are about. Are you one who knows what you are about? Have the pressures of 2020 brought you closer to that realization? Have they brought you closer to others who feel the same? Freedom activists of every stripe have reported to me that their numbers have surged in 2020 in a way they would never have been able to at any other time. This has become so pronounced that some have even taken to calling this period the Great Awakening. The remnant has been roused, and they are congregating into an army, focused on making even more excellent decisions, focused on choosing an even more excellent path, focused on engaging in the even more excellent actions in the face of what life offers them. No, we are not perfect, but there are many striving for greater excellence. The Great Reset happens every Sunday. Focus your intentions there, and you have nothing to fear, because you choose to live a life less fearful and more faithful. You will be wrapped in the cloak impermeable, impenetrable, focused on righteousness, engaged in the great battles of this era or any other, that timeless battle between good and evil upon which the greatest tales of humanity have been written, and upon which to date, good has never been vanquished from this earth, and evil has yet to win. At least that's the history I read and that's the truth that I see. We are the ones today, blessed enough to be able to live through an epic that other generations could only have dreamt of, it is so monumental. What a special time it is to be alive, especially if you make it so. Am I calling on you to go to the house of worship and then to engage in inaction? Hardly. I am calling you to never give in to evil, but to proceed ever more boldly against it. Be a champion of this principle, a warrior. On the Sabbath reset. Spend your seventh day focused on the great reset that matters. Do this and whatever you focus on the other six days, will leave you so much greater of a force to be reckoned with. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. And thanks for your valuable feedback, stay safe and healthy friends.